All right, everyone. So today what we're going to look at is a quick demonstration on your Summative 2 lab. So the first thing that we want to do is grab our pneumatic trough and grab our tubes. Now, it doesn't really matter what tubing you have. There are some that have this kind of weird little thing here. This is just because originally this was a two, uh, a two hole prong and this is just covered up so that doesn't allow gas to go through. Uh, and then you have a belt bending the elbow. It doesn't matter if you have this kind of tubing or you have this kind of longer tubing. It's, it's really all the same. This one just has one hole. It's all the same. So take whatever you have and you're gonna need a 250 mil uh, Erlenmeyer flask. Your, these will fit here. If it doesn't fit, make sure you grab an Erlenmeyer flask that does. You will also need a graduate cylinder, some steel wool, uh, and then your pipettes, acid, scales will be provided and then what's going to be provided to you on the day is this little piece of magnesium okay so you're going to have different pieces and uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to take a little bit of your steel wool okay so take literally a, a small amount that's really all you need and what you're going to do is it might just be hard to see here but we are going to try to we're going to try to uh, take off any kind of oxidation it has so the best thing way to do is just hold it with your finger and literally just really scrape it to become really nice and shiny. If you have any kind of uh, kind of gray markings on there, make sure you try to get those off. Now, some of them you won't be able to because it's part of the machining. It might just be actually like kind of forged into it, but try your best and to try to get all the oxidation off. All right, you'll be able to see it. It's, uh, it's pretty clear when that oxidation comes off. All right. Now, ideally you want to do is you want to have a, uh, a clean one and so uh, you can rinse it off it should be relatively dry and we got our magnesium we can uh, just quickly brush it off and make sure there's no other things on there okay so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to grab a, a little bit of hcl so in this particular case i'm using 0 0.5 molar we have our pipettes okay so remember uh, a button is going to be used to squish it down, suction, and then evacuation. So uh, squish it up like this. We're gonna need 10 mils. So place it in, remember have uh, tip control. And so I'm gonna bring it up. Make sure you don't go above uh, the bulb, like into the bulb. So here at eye level, I got 10. Okay, so I can bring that up. And I'm gonna put that into my Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, remember we have a little bit at the tip. That's fine, it's calibrated for that. So we'll set that aside. Always make sure to close up your vessel at the end. And we're good with our HCL. Now what we're gonna to need to do is we're going to fill up this pneumatic trough with some water. And what you wanna do is you wanna go about half or three quarters of the way because it makes it a lot easier to uh, get your, your graduated cylinder in the way that you need it to be. Now, it does help if you have some kind of plastic film or some kind of plastic card to help you with this part because you want to try to not get any bubbles into the graduated cylinder. So what we have uh, is we have these kind of plastic cards. You can see they're very, very thin. But what it does is it helps you get, uh, helps you cover the graduated cylinder. So what we're going to do with this is that we're going to fill this up to the top with water. We're gonna to try to get it to the, as close as possible. And we're gonna cover it with this as best as we can. And we're gonna flip it over and put that into the pneumatic trough. Now, what we're trying not to do is get any kind of bubbles at the top. If we do, we're gonna restart, okay? Now you might get one sneak by, okay? But that's okay, a little tiny one. But if you have big bubbles, you gotta start over again. So the only time that we're, we're gonna take this, we're gonna to try to cover it as best as possible. And we're gonna, we're gonna tip it over and put it into the pneumatic trough. Okay, so that's the, that's the goal here. So let's go ahead and try to do that. And fill it up all the way to the top. Let any of the air bubbles settle slowly. I'll fill it out to beyond, just to make sure that it is fully, uh, it's full. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to put my fingers on like that and not get any air bubbles in here, right? That's the, that's the ultimate goal. Let's see if, how we do. Okay, so we got one in there. Let's see if we can restart that. Okay. Again, try your best. That's perfect. All right, now we're gonna submerge it, submerge it. 
and here we go. Okay, so that's where we want to be. So we put that under the water. So when we had the graduate cylinder, put my hand under the water, and then once I once it was fully uh, fully immersed in the water, we're gonna take that out, and, and then we have our graduate cylinder. Now you can leave it like that; it's just water. We're gonna now prep our thing. Now, how you do this depends on you. I'm doing it just for the sake of recording. So I have kind of everything in my place, but what I would want to do before I do any of that is uh, measure up my, my little piece of magnesium that I have. Okay, so we need to measure out our 10 mils of HCl on there, and we're going to measure out magnesium. So again, lift the lid, make sure you zero it to get to 0.00 grams, and we're going to put this on here, and we get 0.02 grams. Okay, so I'm just going to measure that again because it was kind of like guessing. 0.02, perfect. Now notice how I washed my hands before then because I don't want to get any water on this that will skew my results. So that's perfect. Now, we're almost ready to go with the magnesium. We have our HCl in here. We have our graduate cylinder tipped up. We need to get our uh, tubing in place. So essentially what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna put this here and we're gonna put this under. Now you have to be careful because you don't wanna put this under all the way. Okay, you don't want this to be kind of sitting here in the graduated cylinder because if this produces a lot of gas and your tube is here, it's going to displace some of that and you're going to get bad readings. So only insert the tube enough that it's going to stay in the graduated cylinder and uh, it's not going to impact, you know, the amount of gas. Now we don't know how much gas we're going to get, so that's going to be a mystery to us, but I'm going to try to keep it as low as possible just so that enough that it doesn't actually slip out of this, the graduated cylinder. So I'm going to carefully tip the cylinder over, place the tube inside and I can see that it's just rising a little bit and it's it's maybe about like yay yay high from the bottom and I'm not crushing that I don't want to bring the cylinder back down because it's gonna crush the tube and 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 stop things from happening so now I'm ready I got my cylinder in place I have my HCl here okay and I have my magnesium strip so I'm gonna place this in and then quickly cover it with the uh, stopper okay so I'm gonna make sure it's a nice seal. And what we can start seeing, I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera, but there are some bubbles that are already starting to form. Okay, you can see, you start seeing bubbles in there. You can mix it around if you like. And hopefully as this progresses, so I can see it's pretty vigorous right now. The bubbles are really, really going. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see that. Oh, and we have our first bubbles in our graduated cylinder. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for the bubbles, the gas is produced to actually fill up the entire Erlenmeyer flask through the tube, and then eventually deposits itself into the graduated cylinder. So this is reacting nicely. It's what it's supposed to be doing. If you wanna give it a quick stir, that's fine as well. And we're just basically waiting for these bubbles to go by, okay? So we can see that little bubbles here and there. Again, it takes a lot of volume for this to fill up, and so uh, don't expect like a massive eruption of bubbles as this goes along. Now, depending on how strong your acid is and how big your piece of magnesium is going to be, it can take um, it can take a couple minutes to a whole bunch of minutes for this thing to actually completely react. So, it's going to be dependent on a number of variables: your concentration, your you know your your acid type, and then your amount of magnesium. And also, if you did a good job. Uh, getting all the oxidation off of magnesium. The reason we want to get rid of that oxidation is because that's forming magnesium oxide. It might not react with the acid the same way that magnesium would. So number one, it's going to mess up your results a little bit if there's a lot of oxidation. Not so much in this case, we're, do, we're, we're using really, really small amounts, but it's also going to help speed up the rate of reaction because we're allowing the acid to react directly with the magnesium that it's you know, so intended to react with. So you can start seeing that we're actually getting a good amount of uh, bubbles right here. It's probably around 10, 10 mil, uh, sorry, uh, 10 milliliters, okay? Because this is a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder and it's still going, still going pretty, pretty vigorously. So you can stir it once in a while. You don't need to do this uh, constantly. Just let it react. Now, if you're finding that your piece of magnesium is sitting on the, like, if you look at the bottom of the Erlenmeyer flask, it kind of bubbles out. If you're seeing that it sits, it's sitting on the top there, it's not really immersed into the, uh, the acid, as it actually just was, uh, just stir it around and get it back 
uh, into that asset. Now, one thing that you're gonna wanna do, so this is gonna take a little bit of time. We're not using a very particularly strong acid here. Uh, not, I'm sorry, I mean concentrated acid. But um, one thing that you're gonna wanna do is during your preparation or after your preparation, uh, in order to do our calculations, we are going to need to know the pressure and the temperature of our room. And what we have is we have a little system set up. Uh, we're using our lab quests. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but this is a real time, uh, a real time measure of both the pressure in KPA and the temperature in degrees Celsius. So we're using, we're using this little thermocouple uh, electrode here, as well as this gas sensor electrode here, and that's giving us some, some uh, readings here. So what we're gonna see is that we're gonna use this on the day of our summative, and we are gonna use those particular uh, temperatures and pressures for our calculations, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna choose uh, a kind of an average of, those, of those, uh, those figures, and we're gonna put them up on the board in order for that reaction, uh, for, for you to have for your calculations. So you can see that this is still going. Uh, it's still going pretty vigorous. Uh, from my point of view, the magnesium has decreased in, uh, in size. The corners are a little bit, uh, a little bit more rounded instead of the sharp edges that they were before and it's, it's noticeably thinner. So again, we're gonna let that keep going, let the bubbles collect, okay? So we keep that going until all of the magnesium is used up, okay? So until we see that the entire piece that we have inserted is used up, again, right now it's taking a little bit of a longer time because we use the larger size and we had uh, our uh, a less concentrated acid. And so again, what we're looking at is to do this. Now, let's fast forward, assume that this has actually completely reacted. What we're gonna wanna do is we can, we can remove this we can remove this tube from the graduated cylinder. But what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna remove the graduated cylinder from the water. The moment that we do, you're gonna see that the, the air is gonna kinda of suck in and you're gonna lose all of your data. So what you can do is you can, you can leave that in there if you wanted to, okay? It's, it shouldn't change your results, okay? So here I am removing it. You can see that there's no change to the amount of gas that we've collected. So at this point, I've completely removed this. So again, that's still going, it's still going, but again, we, we'd want to have that go all the way. I'm just gonna open this up, actually put it out of the frame. It doesn't really matter. And at this point, what we're gonna do is we're going to want to measure our gas. So remember that here we're upside down. The top would be zero. Uh, this first uh, demarcation would be 10, 20, 30, etc. And so you want to try to get to two decimal places. So be aware that again, if I'm measuring here, it's in from, you wanna get at eye level, okay? So you wanna look at this eye level like that, and you want to try to do your best guess. Again, that would be 10, 20, 30, and you wanna to get to two decimal places. So this will be your volume in milliliters. You'll have your pressure, you'll have your temperature, which you'll have to convert into Kelvin, and then you use your gas constant uh, for KPA, not atmospheres, and then you'll be able to find your moles and do your calculation. Now, the whole point of the lab is to do your percentage yield uh, calculations. So you're first gonna have to figure out which one is your limiting reagent, okay? So you have your 10 mils of HCl in this particular case, might not be the same acid for your summative, but you have 10 mils of HCl and you have your mass of your magnesium. So you'll have to figure out what your limiting reagent is. Uh, and then from there, you have to calculate your theoretical yield. And then from there, you can see how much you actually created and compare the two, all right? Now this thing, just in terms of reference, that is done, okay? So in the time that it took for us to explain that, that was done, so it doesn't take a particularly long time. You should be able to get a few trials in and get an average to do your percent yield. So if you do two trials or three trials, three trials is, is ideal. You'll wanna see what the volume is for all three of those, take an average of those, and use those for your calculations in order to figure out what your percentage yield is. Have fun with it, that's it.